Hi, I'm Margaret Peterson Haddix, the author of The School for Whatnots. The School for Whatnots is about two kids named Max and Josie who have been best friends since the very beginning of kindergarten. It is now the last day of fifth grade and Josie tells Max something that is very surprising and sets the action of the entire book in motion. So I'm going to read the chapter where that happens. Max lay on his stomach across the middle of the swimming pool raft, his arms and legs dangling into the water. Our team wins, Josie crowed beside him, launching a plastic basketball toward the hoop at the side of the pool. The ball circled the hoop three times and dropped straight through. I don't think anyone else was trying to beat us, Max laughed. It was the end of school pool party, at Max's pool, of course, and Max felt that glow that comes from spending a full day in sunshine and chlorinated water. The whole class had had pizza and ice cream at midday, and Nurse Beverly and the three teenage lifeguards hired for the occasion might have even let them back into the pool afterward without waiting the requisite 30 minutes after eating. Max felt stuffed and satisfied and sleepy. They were finished with fifth grade now. Max had aced all his exams and the summer stretched out ahead of him, sunny and sweet and endless. From the vantage point of the last day of school, summer always looked endless. Max, it's almost time for everyone to go home, Nurse Beverly called from the side of the pool. Come out and get changed and say goodbye to your guests. All right, Max said and Lazily began paddling his cupped hands, propelling his raft toward the edge. He turned back to Josie and said, you can come back tomorrow and we could play again. Oddly, Josie kept staring down at the water rather than meeting his eyes. No, I can't, she said. You leave for vacation tomorrow. Europe, remember? Oh, Max said, yeah. It wasn't exactly that he'd forgotten. He just didn't want to think about that right now. His family took a vacation every summer, but this trip was going to be different. This time, he would spend three weeks traveling around with his parents, and then Max, alone, would go to a camp in the south of France for another three weeks. And alone just didn't mean without his parents or Nurse Beverly. It also meant without anyone he knew without Josie. Max spun in the water, creating waves. Try one more time, he begged Josie. You have to talk your parents into letting you go to camp with me. Can't, Josie said. Now she lifted her gaze. Water droplets trembled on her eyelashes, making it look like she'd been crying, or as if she were about to cry. Her greenish gold eyes could have been swimming with unshed tears, not pool water. But that was ridiculous. Josie never cried. Max was the tender-hearted one who got upset at so much as a caterpillar accidentally crushed underfoot or a dead lightning bug caught in the grill of his family's limousine. Josie darted her gaze toward Nurse Beverly, then back. And Max, she said, almost whispering, no, almost hissing. I don't know, I can't be sure. The rest of her words tumbled out in a rush, like a river flowing, flooding over a dam. I might not go to the same school as you next year because of whatnot rules. Nothing's been decided yet, but this could be our last day together. They might not let us see each other again, ever. What? Max said. A shiver crept along his spine, a memory he couldn't quite catch. What are what not rules? He didn't give her time to answer. What are you talking about? That's crazy. Make your parents send you to Penobscot school with me, or I'll make my parents send me wherever you go. Never see each other again? That's not possible. Josie's gaze spun here and there, traveling across the faces of their classmates clustered at the edge of the pool and toward all the adults crowding at the edge of the concrete, reaching out to pull the other kids up. Soon, Max and Josie would be the last ones left in the pool. The last ones not moving on, not growing up. I've already said too much, 
Josie whispered, under the cover of pretending to shove Max's raft toward the stairs. And the pretense of sliding her hand past the raft and almost slipping underwater herself. Her mouth hovered at the water line. Don't tell anyone I told you. But Max, remember, find out how to get around the whatnot rules. Find me if it comes to that next fall. She gave him a watery grin. And I'll find you if I can. We'll decide what's possible and what isn't. But, Max began, but Josie had already dived down under the raft and begun swimming for the ladder. And Max, alone, was the last one left in the pool. And that's the end of the chapter. I hope you will find and read The School for Whatnots. Thank you.